Welcome to the West Virginia Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admission Officers Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us. Uh, a few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so please be sure to sign up for additional sessions. The presentation is being recorded and will be available about a week at the same website where you registered. And I'd now like to turn it over to our presenters. And first off, we will hear from Randolph College. Hi, my name is Joy McGrath and I am the Associate Director of Admissions at Randolph College and we are located in Lynchburg, Virginia, which is about um, two hours from Richmond and three and a half from Washington DC and um, Charleston, West Virginia, to give you an idea. We're located on 100 acres, beautiful campus, small, literally five minute walk from one end of campus to the next. The um, average class size is about 12 to 13 students, 600 total students here, extremely diverse student body, about, let's see, 31 states represented, 21 countries, uh, 31% students of color. So we pride ourselves on the diversity of our population. Um, we also pride ourselves on our accessibility with our faculty members. And that's one of the bonuses of attending a small school like Randolph. Our motto is be an original. And so you'll find in our list of majors here some kind of unique majors, I think, you know, museum studies. We do have a museum on campus, the Mayor Museum of Art. Most popular majors, majors are the sciences, biology, chemistry, and physics. Of course, some of those majors are part of our pre-professional program. Um, history and psychology are the other top five majors. And then, of course, we have um, a couple of graduate programs listed there as well. Something we are super excited about starting in August of this year is our take to academic model. So most colleges, students will take four to six classes a semester. We are turning that into taking two classes for seven weeks, have a week off, and then repeat that same process again. The goal behind Take Two is an intensive learning environment, um, really being able to concentrate on those two classes. Um, no classes on Wednesday, using that day for um, athletics, for arts, um, maybe community service, internships, uh, and maybe just catching up on some homework or some readings that you have. And part of being an original at Randolph is also being supported. And a couple of examples here and how you are supported at Randolph in order to be successful. One of the most interesting, I think, is our transition program, which is called SUPER. And it is a STEM bridge program that's two weeks before classes start in August. It is limited to 24 students. There is a separate application for the SUPER program, but you are in that all four years at Randolph. About half of our student population are athletes. We are Division Three in the Old Dominion Athletic Conference, about 19 different teams, um, and have just recently renovated um, our gymnasium and athletic facilities. Maybe in addition to playing a sport, you also want to be an artist. So between theater, dance, um, our museum, uh, music, both vocal as well as instrumental, we've got a lot of different options available on our campus for our artists. And then, of course, student clubs and organizations. We have about 50 different clubs and organizations. Always recommend that our first year students attend our involvement fair that's held in August out on the Bell Quad to see from current upper class students what exactly is available here on the campus. 
lot of traditions here at the college and the one that's probably the most popular are the odds versus the evens and that's based on when you graduate from college so uh, the students that we're recruiting this year seniors will be the class of 25 so they're odds so we have our odds versus our evens fantastic fun times and uh you know so and what's life outside our red brick wall study abroad we do have agreements with four different countries you can go anywhere but financial aid will go with you to these agreements that we have overseas our um, get downtown we're only two miles from downtown lynchburg and um, every year there's a huge social party for our coll collegiate students in the area and then of course internships and research opportunities that are available for students cannot stress this enough wherever you may end up please take advantage of these opportunities all right so in order to become a wildcat today is wildcat wednesday by the way you need to submit your application we do participate with the common app we need to see your transcript um, we do not need your sat or act scores always recommend that you fill out the fafsa that starts each year after october 1st talk to your admissions counselor somebody like myself every college has admissions counselors easy to talk to very friendly we want you to be successful we are here to help you um, and visit visit schools um, you will find a lot of different types of colleges that are in america and you need to find one that fits what you are looking for and then simple make your deposit that's it so i have my contact details here but i will put these also in um, the chat box for you thank you so much have a great evening and rita from catholic university thanks so much joy we presented with each other last night <laughs> all right Awesome. Well, hi, everyone. My name is Rita Murphy. I am the, an admission counselor at Catholic University here in Washington, DC. Um, this kind of gives you an overview of what our campus looks like. And just to kind of give you a little bit of a background, um, Catholic University was founded in 1887 by Pope Leo XIII. Um, we are the National University of the Catholic Church and the second oldest graduate research center here in the US. Uh, so Catholic was actually founded as a graduate research institution first, um, and then we later introduced our undergrad. So we really have that nice um, baseline of that research tradition um, that a lot of our students get involved in um, as early as freshman year of college. So just taking a look at Catholic um, by the numbers, we've got about 3,100 undergrad students and about 2,600 graduate and law students. 80% of our students self-identify as Catholic. Um, you don't have to be Catholic to apply or attend, um, but uh, if that is something that you're looking to pursue during your undergrad, there are lots of opportunities to explore your faith um, with our campus ministry center. And a lot of our students, um, both Catholic and non-Catholic, get involved in our uh, plethora of community service opportunities um, during the week and our two big days of service in the fall and the spring. We have a 30% ethnic diversity on campus and 8% international students. Um, with over 70 majors and 60 minors and certificates, there is, are really a lot of options here at Catholic. Um, that's one thing that, you know, if you are interested in Catholic University, I always just tell students to take a look at um, just how many different majors and specific majors that we, uh, you know, offer. The average class size is about 19 to 21 students um, and a student to faculty ratio of about 10 to 1. So you're really going to get that personalized experience in the classroom. Um, you're not going to get lost in the crowd. And we have 31 campus research centers, um, again, looking to that opportunity to get involved in research on campus um, is totally possible. We, um, I get this question a lot as well, how close are we to DC? We are in Washington, DC. We're in uh, the district um, in the neighborhood of Brookland, but we're about three and a half miles away from the National Mall. Um, so, you know, you're definitely close to all the monuments, Capitol Hill, um, and all the areas of DC that you know, you're going to want to get to know going to city, um, going to college in the city. Um, it's really accessible to get there, um, talk about the metro in a little bit. 
But we also have that traditional kind of campus feel with 176 acres of green space. Um, so you really get that best of both worlds with that campus feel, but the city um, right at your fingertips. We've got uh, 50 states represented in 46 different countries. So you're really gonna be meeting people from all over. Again, looking at you know, what's available to you, um, taking advantage of being in Washington DC is you know, the number one uh, piece of advice that current students give to prospective students. Um, you know, we've got art, culture, music, museums, all the um, Smithsonian's are free, all the Smithsonian museums. And we do have immediate Metro access. We have our own um, public transportation stop right across from campus. You can get on the Metro train um, and get you know, virtually anywhere in the DMV area that you're looking to go. And that kind of opens up some doors for going to different internships that, um, avail that are available to students. So it's really easy to get around DC without you know, needing a car. Um, again, this is the Metro system on the left. So we do have our own stop. You can see um, right on the red line, the Brookland CUA stop. So again, really easy to get to, um, really safe and affordable for students to get to explore um, the city. And then just taking a look at um, you know, how we handle that transition from high school into college, you'll receive an advisor in our Center for Academic and Career Success um, who's cross-trained in both academic and uh, career advising. So they're gonna be able to help you pick your classes, pick your major, um, which you don't have to declare until second semester sophomore year. Um, but they're also gonna get to know your interests and help point you in the direction of you know, those research and in, uh, internship opportunities that there are so many, but it can be a little bit daunting to sort of figure out um, how to tackle all of that. Um, this just kind of gives you a brief look at, you know, all the different schools we offer. We have nine undergrad schools of study, um, the School of Arts and Sciences, the Bush School of Business, and the School of Engineering. We have an undeclared option um, within those separate schools. So that's a really unique opportunity for students to enter into, um, say, business or engineering, but not have to declare that major. Um, we have a lot of popular majors, politics, psychology, School of Nursing. Um, they're building a new building on campus, so that's really exciting. That'll be up by, I believe, 2020. Um, and the Rome School of Music, Drama, and Art has also gained a lot of popularity um, in, the, in the past few years as well. Um, every student will take part in what's called first year experience, um, your freshman year. That'll be one English, two philosophy, and one theology classes. So this sort of aids in that transition from high school as well. Teachers kind of give tips on studying habits, um, you know, just general getting used to college and getting to know DC itself. You'll take excursions into downtown DC and receive faculty and mentorship um, and just kind of have that nice group that you're going to know um, from semester to semester that freshman year to get used to, uh, to being at college. We do have a university honors program. About 10% of our students are involved um, and you get considered for the honors program upon application. So there's no additional um, part of the application needed for that. We also offer a lot of opportunity to study abroad. We have our own flagship program in Rome, um, which is available to students pretty much to take Catholic University abroad with you. We have our own faculty and buildings over there, but we do make sure that every student who wants to go abroad can. Um, you know, any major. There's a lot going on in DC, but there's also a lot going on on campus. Uh, it's definitely not the type of school that you have to leave campus to find something to do. Um, so there, again, there's just a lot of clubs. We've got D3 athletics as well. 30% um, of our students are athletes. And just to kind of move forward a bit, we do use the common application as well. Um, we offer merit awards and uh, scholarships, as well as need-based financial aid that FAFSA and CSS profile as well. Um, and you know, same as Joy, just you know, feel free to get in touch with admission counselors. Um, I am the West Virginia admission counselor, so I'll put my information in the chat. And we are, we are offering in-person and virtual um, academic sessions, student life sessions. So definitely just you know, come take a look. We'd love to, to meet you. Thank you. Great, thank you so much, uh, Catholic University. Next up is the University of Charleston. University of Charleston, you're still with us. Hi, I'm so sorry. My um my laptop froze right when you said University of Charleston, of oh, no. course. <laughs> um, so I think I'm back now though. Um let me see, let me just start my video. 
Hi, I'm Susan. Um, I am an admissions rep at the University of Charleston. Um, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about our school. Let me just get this up here. I'm so sorry that my laptop froze. Of course that happened. Oh goodness. And then I can hopefully share my screen with you guys. Susan, would it help if I shared my screen and clicked through for you? Mm, possibly. All right, let me try that. Sorry about this, everyone. <laughs> so sorry. It's my, my laptop is really not responding right now. Is that me or you, Kaylee? It's me, I'll click for you, go ahead. Okay, is this the first, this is the first slide? Okay, so yes. Okay, so I'm ready. <laughs> Okay, so now that we're up and running, um, so the University of Charleston, we offer um, a several, we offer quite a lot of um, undergraduate programs. We offer um, over 30, oh, we offer over 30, and then um, we have, um, we have eight completely online programs as well. Um, all of our, all of our programs are housed within um, three different schools, well, four different schools. Um, the School of Pharmacy is kind of a, um, a school on its own. And then the rest of our programs are housed under the School of Arts and Sciences, School of Business and Leadership, and School of Health Sciences. And um, we offer fast track programs for the um, the pharmacy program as well. So instead of earning your degree in that in um, eight years, you can earn it in six. And we also offer a fast track program for our physician's assistant program as well. And a lot of our um, programs can be completed in three years instead of four. So we offer a lot of options to get you through your undergrad as quickly as possible. Um, UC is a small private college. Um, we have our, our, Class size is about 14 to one student to teacher race ratio, but your classes will actually be more about nine or 10. Um, so we have a really small campus, a lot of one-on-one -on -one, um, time with your professors. And our campus is really, it's really unique because it's part of Charleston, West Virginia, which is Char Charleston's capital city, but it is also kind of secluded from the actual city because we're across the river from the capital, we're across the river from the business district and all the hustle and bustle of the city. Um, so it also makes for a really great view and it also makes for great opportunities for students who are interested in political science. Like I said, our Capitol building is right across the street. So internship, or right across the river, I'm sorry. So internship um, possibilities there. Also the business district for students interested in business um, programs. And then we also offer um, our healthcare programs. We are in close proximity to the regional hospitals where there will be internship opportunities, clinical rotations. And um, like I said, that small class size. So you get a lot of one-on-one -on -one attention with that. Um, we also are a, we have over um, 40 countries represented on campus. So we have a very diverse student population while also having a very small population. So you make a lot of, um, you make a lot of friends with different backgrounds. And I think that's just really, really great for um, Enlightened Living, which is a big part of our mission statement here at UC. Um, this is our entire campus. It's quite small. Um, we have eight, uh, eight or nine buildings on campus. Um, I think five academic, four or five academic buildings, and then the rest of them are residential. Um, you can see our 
expansive lawn where we hold um, a lot of events. Eagle Fest is a really popular one, which is um, kind of like a get to know you event that we host every year. This year, of course, it looked a little bit different because of COVID, but we um, are still dedicated to um, to connecting you with your other students and the faculty and even some um, some local businesses in um, Charleston as well. And then we also have, um, what's cool is that our campus is small, but we also have um, catwalks built into all of our academic buildings. So if you need to get from one academic building, yep, there is the, there's the one that is um, visible from the outside. The rest are built into the architecture of the buildings. So those are great for days like today when it is I see and freezing out. Um, we definitely take advantage of those and um, our students really like them. As you can see, we also have extremely high per, or we have extremely high passage rates um, for exams whenever students are ready to enter their field of study. And I think that comes back to the extremely small class size. Uh, you get so much attention from your professors and also your peers as well. Um, will help you out. We have a very close-knit um, college community here. Okay, so for things um, to do off of campus and on campus, um, the pictures on the side that you can see there are from are all from Eagle Fest except for um, the concert one. So you can see we put paddle boards in the river. We also do kayaking. Um, students have access to the river and the lawn anytime they want. And it is a, it's definitely a really fun, um, it's a really fun event that we do to get um, people to connect with each other. We have bouncy castles and all that fun stuff. And it's, it's always a really fun time. And then there's also um, off of campus, a popular place is Capitol Street, which is just a really cool little place that has bookstores and restaurants. And even during COVID, they have been very, very good about their restrictions and their guidelines. So um, people are still able to enjoy that. And then we're also in West Virginia. So we have lots of really good hiking spots and um, nature walks and things like that. Um, so moving on to our athletics, we are, um, we're a very athletic school. Um, we have been the national, national um, soccer champions for a um, couple of years running. We also have um, some sports, um, sport concentrated majors. Um, we have sport business, sport media, and a couple more. And they are really popular because like I said, we're an athletic school. Um, and so we have our, we have a couple of our coaches who have been recently recruited by the Yankees. And then we also offer really cool opportunities for internships there as well. Um, our, our scholarships, um, we offer several institutional scholarships, but this one right here is the most exciting, I think, because we have, where we are a private school, um, our sticker price is a little bit higher, but we do have the ability to, based on, to, based on your GPA, um, to award you an automatic scholarship when you're accepted. So you can see um, on the graphic here, like if you have a 4.0 or above, you're automatically given $20,000 and that, that um, amount does not go down unless you dip below a 2.5 during your time at UC. We also accept outside scholarships and um, federal aid. So uh, we always encourage our students to fill out the FAFSA. That's very important. Um, and also we have some other cool scholarship opportunities, including a brand new scholarship called the Idea Scholarship that was created for our creators. Um, we have a lot of athletic scholarship opportunities. And so in order to um, kind of make up for the more artistic, um, the lack of, of, more, of a more artistic scholarship, we've come up with the IDEA scholarship, which is really, which is a really cool opportunity. Um, so we also encourage students to come for a visit. We do offer virtual visits at this time, but um, we also encourage them to come and visit us on campus. We have very, very strict um, COVID 
restrictions and guidelines that we do adhere to. Everybody is in on that together. And we're just trying to keep the UC community healthy so we can have you come and visit campus. Um, springtime is an absolutely gorgeous time to come and visit because all the leaves are coming out on the trees. And um, it's just the sun's back out and it's a really great time. We also have an the opportunity for- Thank, thank you, Col uh, University of Charleston. You're, we're, we're out of time, unfortunately. Oh, thanks. I think I was done anyway. <laughs> Great, thank you so much. Time to move on to our next presentation um, from the University of Northwestern Ohio. Awesome, thank you, Matt. And great job, Susan. Uh, my name is Felicia Brown and I am in the process of sharing my screen now. So uh, hope you guys can see it. I'm an admissions representative for the University of Northwestern Ohio. Um, I actually cover the state of West Virginia. So some of you um, may have seen me in your classrooms <laughs> doing more video presentation, but I'm excited to be here this evening with everyone as well. Let me try to, here we go. So depending on where you are in the state of West Virginia, uh, we're located in Lima, Ohio. So some of you are gonna be within maybe around an hour and a half from the campus. Um, others, depending again on what part of the state of West Virginia you reside in, you may be somewhere uh, upwards of about six hours away from the campus. Um, we are accredited, regionally accredited by the Higher Learning Commission. Um, we're a nonprofit um, organization and I think what's very nice about our campus, one of the things I appreciate is that whether you're a resident of the state of Ohio or you're a resident anywhere in the United States, the tuition is the same for all of our students. Um, you're looking at a picture of our campus map. Um, our campus, it sits on around 200 acres of land. Uh, we traditionally have around 4,000 students on campus or somewhere between 3,800 to 4,000 students on campus at any given time. Uh, we have five different colleges of study. Uh, this evening, I am gonna be giving you information on our College of Applied Technologies. In our College of Applied Technologies, uh, we have three different forms of programs you can go into from a diploma program, associate degree, or the bachelor degree. And you should be able to see a list of those programs right there in front of you. Um, what's very unique about our College of Applied Technologies is almost everything you're looking at is gonna give you around 70% of your training directly in the shop. So we, this particular college is geared towards students who may be listening this evening, who are more hands-on learners from automotive to high performance to even robotics and automation. Some important class information about uh, our school would number one be, um, we do provide all the tools you'll need as a student with the exception of two. So all of our students are required to bring their own digital multimeter and Dow indicator. Though our campus body is roughly, uh, again, 3,800 to 4,000 students. In our College of Applied Technologies, we do intentionally keep those classroom sizes small at around 20 students or less per instructor. And this allows for our students to get a lot of one-on-one -on -one assistance from our instructors, which is critical when you're learning in a shop type of format. Um, most students, whenever I'm in the state of West Virginia uh, in the classroom doing presentations, always ask me about whether they'll graduate with ASC certifications. Uh, absolutely, you will be able to test for as many ASC certifications as you would like. And the uh, cost of your tuition covers two of those certifications, but there are many that you can test for. Um, in regards to our scheduling, um, we're set up on a block schedule. And what's pretty uh, nice and unique about that block schedule is every weekend for our students is a three-day weekend. So as you see, we run on a Monday through Thursday schedule um, because it's, again, so um, hands-on. Uh, we have it set up almost like a work day. Uh, so you're in the shop five hours straight, um, whether it's 7.30 to 12.30, 1 to 6 or 6.30 to 11.30 p.m. Monday through Thursday. And with us being a privately owned nonprofit school, we do recognize every major holiday. So though in most cases, you're going to have a three-day weekend, but there are many weekends where that will be a four-day weekend because of the holidays that fall on Mondays. 
In regards to our campus life, we have a lot of festivities that take place directly on campus from Welcome Week to our open houses to Oktoberfest. So you're looking at some of the, the photos of some of the fun things our students have done <clears throat> during those festivities. Uh, we are a full university, so we have 14 different athletic teams. We compete in the NAIA division, and some of those teams you should be able to see on your screen right now. Our two most popular co-ed teams would probably be our motorsports teams. Um, <clears throat> we have a dirt circle track team, and we also have a drag race team. In regards to those teams, right now you're looking at uh, uh, some pictures of what our students are doing on our drag strips that are right on campus, as well as our high performance motorsports shop. Um, high performance motorsports is, happens to be our most popular applied into program. We are known as the UNOH racers. So what you're seeing on the screen right now, uh, up above is our quarter of a mile NASCAR approved banked racetrack. Uh, we do hold our own uh, race events. Um, at our Lama Land Motor Sports, Sports Park. Um, all of our students, you just show your ID and you're allowed to attend those festivities completely free. Um, again, these are considered two of our 14 different athletic teams. Um, so the cars you're seeing on that track are driven by our students. They're our drivers, they're our crew members. Um, they're also our maintenance guys and girls, and they also build the vehicles. Um, in regards to just some other important things uh, that I think every student needs to look into whenever you're um, deciding, especially to relocate to another state, or even if you're in state, but maybe there's, you know, it's a four or five hour uh, drive away from your home, you want to kind of look into what type of housing opportunities are there for me in either on campus or in a community. At the University of Northwestern Ohio, we have four different forms of housing located right on campus, um, 261 apartments right there on campus. In regards to the campus housing, we have a lot of different things right on campus. Uh, you're looking at a picture of our state-of-the-art sports complex. So it's a full weight, weight facility with free weights, uh, along with uh, what you can't see in this photograph, we do have rock climbing, we have an indoor uh, golf range, we have an indoor soccer um, for our team to practice indoor whenever it's bad weather, but a lot of the students actually come in and they just, you know, whenever it's a non-practice day, they have their own special events that go on that they plan. Financial aid is also available at UNOH. 90% uh, of our students receive financial aid in the form of federal Pell Grants, opportunity grants, should you qualify for it, private loans and scholarships. Career services is available as well. We help students find jobs while students living right on campus, as well as we offer lifetime placement assistance when you graduate. Uh, please go to unoh.edu forward slash high school, or you can scan uh, the barcode you see below to get more information. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, YouTube uh, to get more information about us. Thank you so much, Matt. I appreciate it. Excellent. Thank you so much. And we have one more uh, presentation this evening uh, from the University of Alabama. Hey everybody, thank you all for being here. My name is Billy Rood. I am a regional recruiter with the University of Alabama. So I'm actually based in the Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania area. Um, not exactly West Virginia, but a little closer than Alabama. So typically in a normal year, I do get down um, to visit Alabama or to visit West Virginia, typically once in the spring and once in the fall. Uh, so some of you may get to see me um, at some college fairs or in your high schools if uh, things get back to normal this year. So some of you are probably already familiar with the University of Alabama, uh, but something that you may not know um, is we are actually one of the, um, the top enrollers of National Merit Scholars at Alabama, and we're also number two among all schools in the United States for internship placement. And we're actually number one in the SEC. And my screen just got a little funky here. Sorry about that. 
Um, some of you may have seen our Division One football team win its uh, another national championship recently. So roll tide there. Um, but it is not all about football at Alabama. Our, actually, our average GPA is about a 3.8. Um, and you'll see some of our numbers here. We do, we are a big school, Division I Research University. Um, total enrollment is just around 38,000 students and the undergraduate population makes up about um, a little over 32,000 of that. I know that sounds big, but we do keep our student to faculty ratio small. It's about a 23 to one uh, student to faculty ratio. Right now we do break our campus down into different colleges. So we have the College of Nursing, College of Engineering, College of Arts and Science. Um, so no matter what program you're in, you will kind of go into the same facility, uh, get to know the professors, get to know the other students um, who are also studying that major. So it does make it feel like a much smaller space. But then on the weekends, you do get to have that fun um, of the big school. Something that's really neat about the University of Alabama is about 58% of our students do come from out of state. So you will not be the only one not from Alabama. Uh, you won't be the only one uh, that doesn't say y'all. Uh, you will eventually say y'all. Um, but about 60% of our students are in the same boat as you coming from out of state. So um, you'll, you'll make lots of friends from all around the country. We do have about 200 different areas of study at Alabama. Some of the bigger programs that I see a lot of students coming from out of state for are College of Engineering. We have a fantastic fully accredited engineering program with master's tracks, doctorate tracks, five-year masters. Um, so if you're looking at engineering at all, please make sure you give Alabama um, a look for your future. Um, also, anything within sport broadcasting or the communications area is very strong. Um, and we also have uh, tons of research on campus. So anything in the pre-med, pre-health area, um, you're going to get a really great foundation for going on to um, anything in the medical field. And then, of course, business. Um, I know you can find that at a lot of different schools, but we do have a lot of great business opportunities. And as I mentioned, our internship placements are fantastic. Once you get on our thousand acre campus, you are not going to be bored. Um, again, we do have that division one sports program. So that makes things a lot of fun. We also have two different fitness facilities on our campus with rock climbing walls. We have a lazy river and a water slide. Average temperature is probably around 70 degrees down there. Although it's not that warm right now, that's just an average, um, but you do have an opportunity to float along that lazy river. Um, quite a bit more than you will in West Virginia. We also have one of the largest Starbucks in the nation on our campus, which is kind of fun. We've got three different dining halls um, and we have a, a Black Warrior River that runs right adjacent to campus. So um, if you like to get outdoors, we've got kayaking, we have um, a walking trail right along the river and plenty of stuff to do. If um, you're not a division one athlete. We've got lots of intramural sports, club sports. We have over 600 different clubs and organizations that you can get involved in. And we also have the largest Greek system in the nation. So if you've always wanted to be part of a sorority or fraternity, the University of Alabama is a great place to do that. Our application process is super simple. If we've got any seniors listening in, you can still apply. Application takes about nine minutes. Um, we don't require essays or letters of recommendation. You can apply directly on our website. Great news is next year we will be on the Common App for the first time. So any juniors out there, you will have an opportunity to apply through the Common Application. One reason we do have so many great students from out of state is our out of state scholarship program. You can see the list here. This does change from year to year um, a little bit, but they typically say, stay fairly consistent. So you can kind of see if you have a specific GPA or test score, you will get an automatic merit scholarship. This year we are test optional. Um, we are in the process of reviewing how we will handle things for next year. Um, but again, any, um, seniors listening in, we, we are reviewing as test optional this year. We are located in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. So we're about four hours straight up from the Gulf Coast. We are open for campus visits. So I highly encourage if you can come down, 
please let me know. I'll actually flip to my contact page if you want to screenshot that. Um, if you have an opportunity to come down, please reach out to me and let me know. I would be happy to set that up for you. We also have a lot of virtual events that you can view online um, if you're not able to travel at this time. But again, I'm happy to help you through this application process and roll tide. Excellent. Thank you so much, University of Alabama. So with the few minutes that we have left in the session, I've got a couple general uh, questions for all of our representatives to answer. I'm going to share my screen with our first question. Um, and I'll ask that our um, college reps go in the order of which you presented. Um, but our first question is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? So we'll go back to Randolph College to start us off. So I have a sophomore in college and I have an 11th grader. So have done this and doing this right now. And I think my the, the best advice I can give is do what is best for you, not necessarily what your parents want, what your girlfriend, boyfriend want, what your best friend wants. Look at what you want and what learning styles you best learn, because I think that is that is the key in finding the right college for you. Agreed. Um, I would also say, you know, definitely take advantage of all of the opportunities online right now. If you can't, um, you know, visit anywhere. A lot of colleges have much more on there than we used to have in terms of like virtual tours and uh, sessions like this and things like that. And I always tell students to take notes if you ever go on a visit or do anything um, like you're doing tonight write down any initial thoughts, emotions, anything you might be feeling about those schools or anything you might have heard um, so that you can go back and, and take a look later. All right, it looks like Susan's having some technical difficulties again. So I'm gonna jump in here for her. Um, to build off of what she said, absolutely take the notes, but also ask the questions. You're never going to come across a question that we haven't heard before. I guarantee it. Um, no matter how silly you think it is, not, like just ask the question because you're not going to get an answer unless you ask. And you're not going to know if it's the right school for you unless you know the answers that you need to know. So just ask the questions. Awesome. And I would have to add to what Joy said. Uh, normally, the top advice I give is to know your learning style. Um, I think it's critical in choosing the right school for you the first time. Um, most students are going to be applying for financial aid and utilizing low interest student loans. And oftentimes, if you make the wrong choice of a school, you're losing a lot of money and then you're starting all over. So that would be my number one advice is know your learning style. If you're more of a hands-on learner, those are the schools you should look for, which limits your classroom time and vice versa. Uh, secondly, I always mention in my presentations, please utilize your resources when it comes to funding for school. Um, in the state of West Virginia, being that I cover this whole state, I've seen that some students have parents who have not gone to college before. So sometimes mom and dad may not be your best resource in getting you to college. So I recommend you utilize your guidance counselors. All of us on the call tonight, we've all likely gone to college. Um, we're admissions representatives. So just utilize your resources. Thank you. Felicia, I'm going to build off of that because that's uh, what I'm going to say is usually my main tip, and that is to use us. Um, so speaking of resources, you know, not just that we've gone to college, but we are here for you. So if you email me or you text me, you are not bothering me. That is my job, and I am happy to help you. Um, I have had several students just assume we weren't interested in them because they didn't get an acceptance or they hadn't heard from us. And here we had one letter off on their email or their transcript went to the University of Alabama in Birmingham, which is a completely different school. So use us if you have any questions, no question is stupid um, and get to know us. We are here to help you. Excellent, thank you so much. So we are almost out of time uh, for this session. So I'm just gonna wrap things up with a big thank you to our presenters. Um, thank you to our attendees. Uh, when the 
uh, Zoom window closes, there'll be a link for a very quick four question survey. We appreciate any feedback that you can provide. Uh, this is just one of many sessions being hosted as part of this college fair. So please do sign up for uh, additional sessions. And in about a week, you'll be able to access the recording from this session as well as other session recordings. So thank you so much and have a great rest of your evening. Thank you, Matt. Thank you.